Welcome to another episode of You Had Me to Eat. I'm Erica. This is Jules. Was someone screaming in the background? Oh, wow. You never know what's going to happen around here. Cool. Yeah. Good timing, huh? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Uh, Hey, Jules. Hey, I just saw you. You did just see me. I was in your time zone. It was quite a good time. Yeah, man. So Jules flew out, even though I told her not to because it's so freaking expensive, but she loves me that much. I do love you. Um, plus her kids here. So honestly, she gets the best of both worlds. She gets yeah. to see uh, one hysterical girl and then just go to another one. Which one is which? <laughs> I'm the hysterical one. <laughs> so Jules helped me with my um, non-wedding wedding that I had on the 29th of February, which is kind of fun. It was a leap year wedding. It was the most non-wedding wedding I've ever been yep. a part of. <laughs> we had already been married, so there was no like ceremony. So um, I think that people were just like, what is this then? And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's just like a thing. Uh, I hate parties about me. I like um, helping with parties and setting out appetizers and cooking for parties, but I don't like when parties are about me. So I really struggled, but my friends were like, you have to have a party. I physically was not allowed to not have one. So we just gathered some good friends. Uh, Jules came. It was awesome. Our neighbors came who are really close to us and we had a great time. You had amazing neighbors. I love They're your neighbors. So, so kind. They're all so great. I'm like checking Zilla right now for uh, anything Please available. Please come live on my street. <laughs> Just my street. Just Nobody your street. Cool. Just my Just street. Just your street. Yes, I know. Um, but yeah, no, it was super cool. It was just like the best place you can think of. You know, like everyone was chill. There's no drama. There's no gluten. It was great. It's yeah. exactly what I wanted. Um, my friends are so awesome. I've known these people since like junior high. So that's terrifying because we all just celebrated our 40th birthdays this past yeah. year. And it's been a, a whirlwind, but I'm very thankful to have people who are just like so kind and so caring and just like so supportive of me. Um, so that was really lovely. And I'm yeah. so happy you got to meet them. Yeah, and me they too. They were so happy to meet you too. Yeah, I had reached out to a couple of them on Instagram because I just, I needed a little bit of info without you knowing about it. Yeah. And um, so they were helpful. So I had sort of met them that way, but it was great to meet them in person. And um, yeah, and I knew you didn't like to be the center of attention and I knew you didn't want to be like a partier <sighs> and be like posing for pictures everywhere and everything, which is why we came up with that stunt to produce the life-size version of Erica and Matt <laughs> in like... <laughs> have them <laughs> under the balloon arch for people to take pictures with, which was super fun. Yeah. And they flew uh, from Baltimore with a uh, life-size uh, cardboard <laughs> cutout of us, which honestly, Matt and I still don't understand how you put well, it in the you, you airplane. Just, you don't need to understand anything. I just hope it stays in your house forever. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> JoJo. decorated for the season. <laughs> Seriously. Our cat, like I think finally figured it out that it's like Matt. Cause he like looked at it and he's like, just looking at Matt, and I'm just like, <laughs> it's daddy. And he's like, it's yeah, wild creepy, to see like the computer flat kind daddy. Of, yeah, flat daddy. So yeah, it's currently in our living room. And everyone's like, what are you going to do with it? And I'm like, I'm not really sure. It's staying, but I just don't know. Matt's like, can we cut out our faces and then like have it be a, like a photo state, a photo booth for all of our upcoming events? I'm like, no, but okay. <laughs> you can put hats on it. Oh, yeah, you can like be great. put mustaches. Mm -hmm. and you can totally decorate it up. It'll be perfect. All the all of the holidays and seasons. It'll be great. So yeah, so it was just like the most chill. Again, like I have been watching Love Is Blind. Do you good for know you. any of that? It's just no. it's such bull. It's so gross. TV. It's like the grossest. TV. <laughs> it's like the McDonald's of like food. Perfect. Which is so, love is blind to TV. So perfect. it's just junk food of the mind. But the concept of love is blind is that you have a bunch of singles in one city and then you put them behind walls and then they like talk to each other without actually seeing who they are or having any physical description of their bodies or anything. So it's 
it's a good concept for understanding, like, is love truly blind? Isn't that like the dating game back in the day? Yeah, totally. Isn't that the? Yes, yeah, okay. but it's like, right. but the concept of this is, it's you have these people who are ready to get married. So, like, literally, they meet each other, and within a week, they have to decide if they want to propose. And then within, like, four weeks, after they meet and see each other, they decide if they want to get married. But the whole time, I'm just like... These women are so desperate to just be married. It doesn't even matter if it's like true love that they were just like, mm. I don't care. I just want a wedding. I want a dress. I want to look beautiful. I want this. And no, it so is they just don't like, want to be married. They want to have a wedding. That's and what it's it is. The opposite of me yeah. where I'm just like, yeah. I just, um, this, I mean, this, it's lovely for the government. I hate the idea of a, of a, of a marriage that mm-hmm. you're tr- like, this is the only way to like be truly in love is to get married. And I'm like, this is such, that's such bullshit. Yeah. I mean, especially with today, like, you know, before, um, before queer people are allowed to marry, I'm just like, this is, I never want to get married until everyone has the right to be married. And then when our friends had the right to be married and they had a wedding, I'm like, okay, maybe I just don't really want this at all. <laughs> like maybe I wasn't like protesting on behalf of this. Maybe I just like don't mm-hmm. want this. And we just realized after 13 years, I'm like, I don't want this. I don't want this at all. But then I'm like, dude, there's so many like legal aspects to getting married. I'm like, it's so gross that I have to sign a piece of paper and you have to apply. And it's just like gross. It's weird. I don't like it, but we did it. So whatever. So I like, didn't want any of that kind of stuff. And like, thankfully our friend owned a venue. We have beautiful photos. My aunt's a wedding photographer. We have gorgeous photos. Most people want to wear a dress and look pretty. And I've already done that. Like I didn't need to do that in front of other people. Twice actually. (laughs) Yeah. We have two sets of wedding (laughs) photos. So uh, yeah, it's just so weird. I just like, I'm watching Love is Blind and they're just like rushing down the aisle and I'm like, I still feel like 13 years isn't long enough. I'm just like, man. Well, the, the people like that are what skews the divorce rate in this country, I suppose, because what is it? It's, still, it's 50 or 60% now. Yeah. Like people get divorced, right? I'm just like, yeah, man, this is, this is weird. So one couple ended up getting married from the season and the others were just like, no. And I'm like, good. Yeah maybe four weeks of not knowing someone is not long enough. Yeah. So yeah, it's just like, it's so weird. I watch those shows and I'm just like, Oh, Ooh, why would you want to do that? <laughs> and um, what's so funny is the day after I got married, I got a message from the casting agent. Cause I have some casting agents that have contacted me before to like um, apply for game shows and stuff. And I had been in, I had been in works wait, with a game wait, show wait, wait, casting. Wait, 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 back it up. You've never told me this before. This is so cool. Tell me, tell me, tell me what game shows. What? So when Matt and I were first together, we, so I had, oh my God, I think it was because I worked at this. I think the story was I worked at the zoo and there was, I was helping this casting company that came um, doing like some sort of like zoological, do you want to work as a vet casting? I don't really remember. This is so, so long ago, Jules. Mm-hmm. And I had this person and I was like following them and they had put me on their email list of just people who had been casted. I had gone through in college, um, casting for a reality TV show. I told you about this. Remember in the hot tub, I told you about... <laughs> I distinctly yes. remember. Yes, the, yes, that part, but yes. that's the game show part. Like, so this was um, like, so, anyway, so I, w- I had been on this email casting list because I connected with a casting agent who I had like worked with at the zoo or whatever years ago. So every now and then I get pitched for, hey, apply for this, whatever. So I had gone through casting for uh, pressure lock. So I'd gone through casting and they're like, hey, do you want to, do you know Pressure Luck? I, no. I remember Pressure Luck from the no. 80s or 70s. No. It was an old game show. Now it's back. Anyway, whatever. So I went through casting and I didn't make the casting call this time, but I'm now on this casting list of like, hey, this is what you're interested in. Would you want to apply for it? So I got a casting notification, like an email list. It's like, hey, we're casting for Bridezilla's in your area. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you just missed me. You just missed me. And that show oh is God. like the worst show on oh, the planet. It is. Because it is he's oh, disgusting. And it's so, so gross. For all the listeners out there, I kept yeah. like 
absolutely pushing Erica's buttons before her non-wedding wedding party because I kept saying things like, well, what does the bride want for her party? And <laughs> what's your choice? Because it's up to the bride and it's bride's choice. And so she would be like, bleh, bleh. <laughs> so, like so gross. Yeah, you were like the anti-bridezilla, but um, yeah, that's pretty funny. If, <laughs> so I, I just like, I'm just like, man, you were like a month late. I'm so sorry. I couldn't be there mm -hmm. for you. They're like, are you getting married in April? I'm like, sorry, it was February. <sighs> Could have been a bride sola. Could you imagine if the cast and agent would be like, wait, hold on. You should be more upset about things. I'm like, I could be more upset about so many things. <laughs> so many what do you things. need me to be upset but about? But not the dress. <laughs> but not what I'm wearing. Not what I'm no. serving. No. And and yeah. and speaking of which, what you chose to have at the party, I thought was just fantastic. It was low key, chill, easy. Everybody was happy. It was basically finger food, all gluten free, dairy free. Nobody was complaining. It was easy to. Um, you know, like I said, finger food, like carry around it. It was very doable for, you know, the two or mm -hmm. three of us to basically pull it together. It didn't, you know, cost like a ridiculous amount of money to have to hire a caterer. And yeah. it was a beautiful spread and it was lovely in your outside backyard. I mean, the whole thing just came together so well. And so kudos to you for your planning on it, all of that. Thank and, you. Um, I just, I think it, it, it was just, it was great. It was really chill, just like you and Matt are chill. And for all of the people out there who are considering, like, how do you pull off a party of some kind? It doesn't have to be mm -hmm. a wedding party, but like a party. And you're considering, you know, how do you make people happy and the dietary restrictions and, you know, what do I have to do? Blah, blah, blah. There are so many ways to do it without mm -hmm. becoming a Zilla of some kind, freaking yeah. out about everything. And even in the invitations, it literally says like, no gluten, no drama. And like, I think everyone assumed that, but I think that there was like, there was no really like alternative. Like, I'm pretty sure they would just assume that everything would be gluten-free, but they're like, is everything gluten-free? I'm like, it is. So I can have it just in case you dip something in the wrong thing. Like no one's going to get sick. And actually yeah. there was gluten because a small child came and bless her. So she um, has a medical condition, which she mm -hmm. has to be keto for a medical condition. Yeah. And I met her. She was so cute. The sweetest, nicest neighbors ever. And they're like, we brought our own keto pizza. And I'm like, okay. And it was like in a little plastic thing. I'm like, cool, man. That's cool. But they're so considerate of it because yeah. we, you know, I exchange keto products with her all the time when I find new stuff. And they're the kindest, sweetest people ever. But it's not like yeah. they're like, I brought a little Caesar pizza. It's like, no, this, <laughs> no, this kid has like a no. medical restriction. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. she was able to eat. Mm -hmm. The other kids were able to eat cookies. I mean, everyone was so happy. Jules yeah. made her amazing cupcakes and amazing sugar cookies. And like all night people were like, this is so good. And I'm like, dude, for real, it's all her. It's all <laughs> her. Like just, it's, it's wild. So it's, um, everyone was so thankful because we made a ton of cupcakes and a ton of sugar cookies and I had to go boxes. So everyone got to take home that was so cool. cookies mm -hmm. and cupcakes. Yep. And it's just like, we didn't want to do like party favors, you know, where people are like little kiss it. I mean, I've spent so much time on Pinterest being like, what's the chillest party favors. And it's like, everyone's like, put Hershey's kisses in ball jars. I'm like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, that was so yeah. smart. And we even took some of the cupcakes and some cookies too um, to my daughter's roommate who has celiac disease. And she was like over the moon. I, I hope she got some because her other roommates and sweet mates, whatever, they all dove in too. And they were like, yeah, like, it's so know. good. Yeah. Um, I ended up having one cupcake. We made how many? Like 50? Oh, 60 cupcakes. Yeah. And oh, God. And I, I had one. I how many hundreds of cookies we made. And I yeah. had four cookies. Mm hmm Yep. 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 <laughs> it checks that, out. That adds up. Exactly. <laughs> and I swear to God, I ate like two zucchini the whole night. I was eating so much oh, zucchini. I ate so much zucchini. <laughs> like when, by two zucchini, you mean whole zucchini, right? Yeah. I, yeah. I ate the other two whole zucchini. Yeah. I was I like, I did have a lot of zucchini. Yeah. And there's, so a picture, there's a picture of me eating and I'm like, what am I eating? I'm like, oh, they're just like a giant stick of zucchini. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Cool. It was, it yeah. was really good though. Okay. Let's talk about all the bullshit. 
Okay. Are we not Let's talking talk about you know, bullshit. Let's talk about all the bullshit. Yeah. So we've had enough fun talking about <laughs> happy no, things. Happy Let's talk. talk about bullshit. So the biggest thing in my life right now, I have devoted <laughs> like some sort of true crime aficionado. I swear to God, I'm going to quit all my jobs and just devote my time to just figure out like, let's make a documentary on how this happened. And like, mm-hmm. just, I watch a lot of true crime. I watch a lot of like, how did this happen? There was like a, a Hulu documentary called Bad Vegans or something where it talked about like, it wasn't about like people who are not actually vegan, but they were like vegans and they were like breaking the law. But I'm obsessed with this kind of stuff. So this kind of stuff that I'm talking about is there was news by someone, I believe it was Aaron from Gluten Free Globetrotter. There was some chatter amongst local yeah. New York people. And what had happened is there was a vegan store um, and it's like a, like a neighborhood market or like a, like a, like a dedicated vegan grocery store, but they also had like farmer's markety kind of things like fresh baked items from vendors. So this place is called Cindy's Snacks and she was purchasing gluten-free vegan donuts. And it was supposed to be like allergen friendly, gluten-free, like, like not just like, Hey, they happen to be gluten-free. Sure. You know, whatever. Like these were like people who have celiac disease can eat these, right? So gluten-free vegan donut from a company called the savory fig. So this has gone on for, I don't know how long, but at least over three major holidays, Christmas, Valentine's day. And now, because there are some receipts, (laughs) what happened was she came with some donuts to sell to this as a vendor to the store. So Cindy Snacks could sell the donuts. Resell. And what, and what appeared to look like a standard puffy fried Dunkin' Donuts. And why I say Dunkin' Donuts is because it was strawberry frosted, which is like their signature go-to donut. But it has little D's in the Dunkin' Donuts colors as sprinkles sprinkles yeah were d's so you're looking at a picture and i'm like oh that's clearly a dunkin donut it has a signature pink frosting and orange and pink d's the letter d sprinkles and apparently this was what the savory fig had given to cindy snack saying like this is a gluten-free uh vegan donut that that i made (laughs) that i that i have made for you to resell right um and so Cindy Snacks posted something and it was like, here's a picture of the donut. I just want to be very transparent. We don't have more information. I feel very uncomfortable selling this. Just so you know, we have pulled these items, but I just wanted to let you know we're in talks with our supplier, the Savory Fig. We don't really know what's going on, but as a warning. So as you scroll through these Instagram photos from Cindy Snacks, you see that basically the person who's working there going like, Hey, can I just like verify that this is indeed a donut that you made and it's, and it's vegan. And she's like, yes, of course I made this. She goes, okay, because it looks a lot like the Dunkin' Donuts (laughs) with the pink frosting and the D's. And she goes, Oh, I had extra donuts that I had made for someone's birthday. And he's like, "Mm, okay. And she goes, well, can I see the sprinkles that you ordered? Because, like, I don't see sprinkles like this on Amazon that are available to the consumer. That are vegan. I mean, you can't buy Dunkin' Donuts D sprinkles. So she shares a picture. So this woman's doubling down, like, yeah, here's here's the sprinkles. And she shares a picture of an Amazon picture. And she goes, okay, but can you show me the sprinkles? Like, can you show me the sprinkles in the donut that you made? She goes, yeah, hold on, I'm not home. And then, like, hours later, posted a picture of, like, a container of sprinkles that has letters in it. And you're kind of like, these don't really look like the the D's that you'd see on a Dunkin' Donut, but like, okay. And she's like, okay, well, can you can you just verify? Because it, it doesn't seem like those D's are the same D's in there. And like, honestly, that product doesn't look vegan either. So I'm just making sure. So it goes on and on, but basically they've gotten to the point where they don't trust this woman making Dunkin' Donuts and at this, or making 
gluten-free, dairy-free, vegan friendly donuts for this company. They're like, we don't, we have no faith in this person. Right. But we still feel like they're Dunkin' Donuts and there's no like, this is me making them and here's me <laughs> piping them and here's me whatever. Like there's no receipts like that that she can show. So it goes deeper because apparently ve like vegans of Long Island or whatever picked it up on Reddit. And this is where I actually got very interested in it because if you go on the Reddit, this is where I went down the rabbit hole. You actually <laughs> Reddit see people. Reddit is AKA for rabbit hole, by the yeah. way. <laughs> so you see people talking about like, hey, her donuts didn't used to be like this. And it's really only been the, for the last few months that like these things have come up. But she, he, they're like, here's a side-by-side -side picture of her holiday donuts and her, her um, Valentine's Day donuts that are gluten-free and vegan. Mm -hmm. And they are the exact same as the Dunkin' Donut versions of them. So there's a picture of what the savory fig hand delivered to resell at Cindy Snacks. And then there's a picture of like, this is what the Dunkin' Donuts looks like in Dunkin' Donuts. And it's not just like, wow, those, those sprinkles are similar. So maybe she's going to Dunkin' Donuts being like, I want to recreate that. Let me see if I can, because we've all been there. It's like, mm -hmm. that, is a, that is a mirror image. And we know Dunkin' Donut Donuts are hard to replicate. Mm -hmm. Even if you're frying donuts, you can get very close because Jules, you've made donuts. Mm -hmm. And they're great. But yeah, like but it's making donuts an industrial scale, making them in a donut machine maker. processing. Yes. Like that's very different than a home baker making them for sale yeah. in a farmer's market situation yeah. like this. And you like don't donut have balls same machinery. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Donut balls. Like I get gluten free vegan ones at my farmer's market. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I know that they're gluten free and vegan. Yeah. I can taste them. They're delicious. Matt's like, these are really good. But he at no point was like, holy shit, they're like a Dunkin' Donut. Because yeah. that would be worrisome to me. I would definitely go back and be like, right. what flour are you using? Whatever. Right. And in this, this Reddit of Long Island, people are just like, I've been having it for months. And I go, I cannot believe they, they are vegan because they taste just like a Dunkin' Donut. And everyone's like, that is their number one comment. And I'm like, listen, if it looks like a duck and it quacks like a duck, <laughs> it's a fucking duck. Yeah. So... Everyone's like, these are Dunkin' Donuts. Like, you cannot mistake them. And there's no receipts that say differently. So what this person did is shut down every, all of her social media. It's no longer replying to anything. And the day that this happened, she was at a, a Long Island farmer's market, a vegan farmer's market. So people were warning the vegan of Long Island, like, hey, man, I don't know what's going on, but, like, don't eat her shit. Yeah, right. So everyone's defending, like... I've had her stuff. Are you sure? Are you sure it wasn't a mistake? And everyone's like, it's not a mistake if you buy a donut at Dunkin' Donut and then resell it for like $7 a donut or something <laughs> insane. Yeah. Like her markup on this was wild because people on Reddit were trying to figure out like, how much markup is she getting on a donut that you would have to endanger someone's life for? Because that's basically what you're doing mm -hmm. at this point in time. So I posted about it because I'm like, I cannot wait for information on this. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to just like find out why she, what's going on, why she did this, like anything from her side, but there's nothing because she was like, she was defending it. She's like, yeah, I made these for someone's birthday. And like, yeah, I'm like, mm, no, you didn't like this is a donut. Yeah. Yeah. So there were no backup. She was not like, I'm here to defend myself. This is actually how I bake, like whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Also, Totally forgot this part. They tested the donuts I using gonna, easy I was gluten waiting for you to on a lateral yeah. flow mm -hmm. device, and yeah. they contained high high levels of gluten. Yeah. So because again, they were this, made with gluten flour because it's a Dunkin' Donut donut. Because it's a Dunkin' Donuts donut. Yes. So, so it was like, hey, hey, this isn't just like a we use the same mm -hmm. fryer. I'm so sorry, I didn't understand. This is like. We just don't care and we're going to try to pass this off for as many months okay. as we can. Like you're a yeah. horrible person for doing that. So anyway, so I posted, uh, I posted the reel and it got a ton of traction. Mm -hmm. And based on that reel, Allergic Living posted about something, linked back to my post, got even more traction. And then um, uh, someone that I know through the Natural Products Expo, Natalie, who's like a very, very... Um, who used to be super big in the vegan world actually went on her TikTok and was like, I got to share this. 
And I don't know if she saw it online, but chances are she saw it literally everywhere because so many people yeah. are talking about it on the same day. It was wild. I'm just like, hey, if you don't know about this, you have to because I want you to also go down the rabbit hole with me because I'm like yeah. obsessed with this. Mm -hmm. So she posted about it and then it went wild. It's been mm -hmm. posted by Eater. It's been posted by like literally everyone is just sending me nonstop links. And I'm like, good. I'm glad that this is yeah. getting where it is because now like people have contacted the health department, people have contacted a bunch of different venues to try to figure out what's been going on, wh how, how she's doing this, how she has gotten away with it for so long. And like, what are the ramifications, right? Of all of this. So we don't know anything yet other than like, yeah. obviously everyone was tagged that has ever done business with her and told not to use her as a supplier. And right. then she, she shut down, right? Yeah. She shut down yeah. everything. Right. So, uh, I think it's a lesson. One Reddit is the people's journalism and it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. And if you're not reading Reddit, please do because it's great. But the beauty of social media is when something like this happens, Everyone gets the information immediately, makes their own yeah. judgment, and can share about it. It's good and bad, right? Say she, the donuts had not tested positive, and she's like, actually, like, my whole goal is to make Dunkin' Donuts friendly for everyone. And I actually researched the sprinkle suppliers and do this and this and this. I'm like, what if? And then she showed videos of her making it, and they looked exactly like, like what if she had done that? Okay, mm -hmm. cool. She didn't, obviously. Right. And clearly right. it was tested right. to be full of gluten. But Well, but she's not the first one. And that, that's that's really sad, before. right? There was a guy mm -hmm. in North Carolina years ago who was selling bread, like regular bread. Mm -hmm. And and he doubled down too and was mm -hmm. like, no, it's fine. It's gluten-free bread. Mm -hmm. Like you are making people sick right and left. You're endangering people's lives. Mm -hmm. And there was like that, what is it? A better, better than good baking company that was selling flour that was the same oh. thing. Yeah. I mean, that was nasty too. That was like testing it. I was just looking up the numbers and they were so, again, at farmer's markets. Yeah, thousands like, and of parts per million. It was 177,000 parts per million of mm. gluten. Gluten-free flour. Right. Sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And then, of course, there was that salsa, salsa Texan. Salsa Texan with the, tor yeah, the coconut tortillas. tortillas that were actually made with wheat. Yeah. and cool. And, you know, it's just, it's so... It's such a shame because, you know, this is, I think, still fallout from the fad dietism mm -hmm. where there's so many people who are like, hey, it doesn't matter. People just are trying to cut back on the gluten or they're just vegan. It doesn't mean that they need to have no eggs in their diet or whatever. You know, it's, wild. it's it's none of your fucking business why we eat the way we eat. If If somebody says that they need something, then you have to honor that it's you don't need to know why but you need to treat that as severely as a food allergy or as celiac disease because people's lives are on the line when they're eating your food and it's it's not okay it's absolutely not okay and it's, it's really it's very upsetting when this happens yeah it's um it's 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 frustrating. It's also life endangering. And it is. I think what is so horrible, like on uh, Cindy snacks or whatever, you know, there are some people who are like, I shop there because I'm dairy free. Like yeah. I'm, I'm dairy free. And that's why I shop here. Not because I'm vegan. And I, there are so many times where I go to vegan right. food that's vegan and gluten free because for sure. It's dairy free too. Yeah, and it's not, I'm, dairy. Gonna go, I'm not going to go into anaphylaxis if I have dairy, very different. But the idea is like, there are these words that con connote something to someone. And for vegan, it typically means dairy free. Now for allergies, obviously you'd have to check to make sure if it's made in the shared facility or if you feel comfortable with the manufacturing, clearly you shouldn't because this person was not, I mean, it's just, it's, it's, um, it's disheartening and it's a bummer because I feel like so many more people are going to hear this story and not hear about all the good gluten-free things that are going on and just be like, oh man, like what a, what a train wreck gluten-free is right now. You know, well, meanwhile, there's so um, many people that go through certification right. yeah. and, that's, and that's like, that's my net net. And that's where I, 
uh, you know, people come to me and they say, well, how can I trust anything? And I'm so frustrated. I'm so upset and whatever. I'm like, you can trust the best way to do it is to buy something that's certified. You know, mm-hmm. literally that is, that is what we can do at this point is to buy from companies that have gluten-free certifications. And, um, you know, for example, there's, this is something else we see all the time as well is right now there's another recall. It's Stonewall Kitchen oh, because yeah. they mispackaged their, I guess their wheat donuts in a gluten-free box. We see that all the time. And when you have a company that makes gluten products and gluten-free products, they often make mistakes. And and that is a very different situation than these people intentionally going out and trying to pawn something off as being gluten-free that Mm -hmm. they know is not gluten-free. So I would never say that Stonewall Kitchen, you know, is a bad actor here. Stonewall Kitchen made a mistake and it's very unfortunate. But it's more it's more likely to make a mistake when you have two products that are the same that are going in similar boxes Uh because then you have human error. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, if you want to be safe, if you really are afraid, you buy from certified products from an independent certifier, not companies that say we're gluten free, but they don't have certification. And maybe you decide you're staying away from companies that make both. You know, they have identical Mm. products and they put them in similar boxes. That happens a lot. And we see these recalls not infrequently. Vans Waffles waffles has happened multiple times. Twice, yeah. The chicken nuggets situation comes up periodically. Man. You know, this one, there's there's lots of things that happen. And and then even even the things that aren't recalled, it's it's frustrating to me when companies put products that look very, very similar. You know, in mm-hmm. in their packaging, I, mean, I have a whole post on it on my website. Like, don't do that. Like, make it really hard yeah. to buy the wrong product. Yeah, or like Oreos have gluten free stamped on them. Yeah, literally on the sandwich right. cookie. Yeah. Like, who would I mean, have thought Oreos is a superhero? But um, <laughs> Oreos yeah, literally the hero in the situation. It's just like this except is... they put oats in it. But yes, that's another story. That's um, a whole, whole nother story. <laughs> Thanks, Mondelez. But, you yeah. know, and I think what's what's frustrating for me as someone who has a very vibrant farmer's market community yeah. and people who are gluten-free and dairy-free in my farmer's market, especially gluten-free and vegan, um, there are some that I trust. There's the wild chickpea um, who, you know, what he makes in his fryer is dedicated um, gluten-free but, you know, at home when he makes things, he makes it known that it's a shared kitchen. And I've had celiac friends also eat there and I feel comfortable eating out of his farmer's market stand. Um, there are a lot of other ones that I do not yeah. and that I've seen right. people eating at. And I'm like, mm, I don't you gotta trust ask that. so many questions. And yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I don't mostly have time for that. Like, but right. and there are thankfully a lot of dedicated gluten free places, too. But it's sure. just like. Man, it's so frustrating because the first time I was gluten-free and I went to a farmer's market, there was like this company and they had a gluten-free bread. And I'm just like, I don't know how you can make this. She goes, well, we produce it on a separate day. And I'm like, but you have 85 other different types of loaves that contain gluten. Like, how are you? And so that was like my first time I'd ever seen anything in farmer's market that I'm like, okay, maybe this is not for me. Mm -hmm. Like maybe not everyone has the same level of strictness that I believe that we should all have. Right, right, right. And thankfully, I mean, they were making it with gluten-free flour and they weren't just getting a loaf of, um, It's a good start. Yeah. yeah. Dave's going bread and saying that it was like (laughs) candy bakehouse. So it was just, the well, whole story is it's sucks. very it's <laughs> saddening um because it does point out like a big flaw in you know humanity uh that they can you know people can exploit some people yeah. can do that but i don't think the takeaway is that you know we can't trust our food at all and you know our lives are terrible and no gluten free food is safe and whatever i i don't think we need to go down that depressing hole. I do think there are ways to trust our food, but you know, you can't just blindly 
trust anything yeah. that says it's gluten free. And, and we haven't ever been able to do that. That's never been a thing. And the sad thing is that there are a lot of people um, who are either new to the gluten free diet or who just want to believe they're mm -hmm. just tired, they're lazy, they're whatever, and they just want it to be so. And so they don't ask the questions or yeah. they just are like, you know, I don't care. I want to eat it anyway or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you're, you're taking a risk at that point and you just yeah. have to know that. And, and when you're talking about something like these issues, it's not just celiac disease. Like you might, you might be taking a risk if you have other food allergies because yeah. you know, not everybody understands food labeling, even though it's incumbent upon manufacturers to understand food labeling, that does not mean oh, that God. they do. I just so. feel like you're a cottage baker. You have a cottage baker <laughs> yeah. license. You have to understand this, but so many people well, don't. It's not even just that. I mean, food manufacturers on a, on a much higher level, yeah. <laughs> we see errors like that all the time. Yeah. So, you know, it's the FDA does not have enough minions to run around and police this. So back to your earlier point, social media does have a place there. But we all have to do our own due diligence. We all have to read all the labels. We have to ask all the questions. But the best place to start is if given the choice, buy something that is certified by an independent certifier. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. uh, and we'll post a link here um, to my post that has all of the independent certifiers so you can recognize our labels because a lot of companies post their own gluten-free symbol that kind of looks like a certification, but it's not an independent certification mm -hmm. and you need to know the difference. And then, like I said, maybe you decide that you're going to stay away from companies that make two versions of the same thing because there is, you know, always the possibility that they're going to make a mix up there. There is. And I don't want people to take away from this. Like you said, that like, you should be so vigilant that you vigilant. You're so vigilant. <laughs> I don't you're want so people to, you can't even think of the right word. <laughs> I don't want people to take away from this, that you have to be so vigilant that you, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was emphasizing it. <laughs> I don't want people to take away from this that you have to be so vigilant that you are literally having the worst life ever. Yeah. We know that the more yeah. vigilant you are, the lower your quality of life is. We've seen papers on this. There can be an appropriate level of anxiety and nervousness around your food and having to do research on is this truly safe for me or not. Right. But at the same time to not be so down the rabbit hole where you're like, well, I don't trust any food now that isn't right. cooked by me. Right. But also if it looks like a Dunkin' Donut, don't eat it. Are you kidding right. me? I would lose <laughs> yeah. my shit. So Matt's just like, you really got into this. And I'm like, I did. And I think I'm, I think I'm just, I, I need, I need, I need to know. I need to, I need to have a reason why this person did it other than just for money. Oh, you're not going to find a reason. I used to prosecute people for a living and the criminal mind is not something that non-criminals can often understand. I want this to be an episode of Law and Order where there's a, like a really good wrap up and you're like, oh, that's why we know, well, she's a terrible person, but that's why she did it. You know? <laughs> that's right. I don't know. Isn't it enough just to know that some people are bad people? No, I really do. <laughs> I'm really obsessed with this. So I am staying tuned to this. I just posted about it again on Instagram and people are like, what's the follow up? And I'm like, listen, I'll know when you know, you know? So all I know is that the health department and all those people who are, you know, a part of the whole long island scene there are involved and hopefully we have more details but this is just a wild story and mo more people are even posting about it today man so like you're gonna hear a lot about it mm. and i yeah i just it may i have never wanted dunkin donuts so bad in my life because now i've just been obsessed at looking at dunkin donuts for like days now and i'm just like mm -hmm. oh man mm -hmm. oh, i miss i miss dunkin donuts that was it <laughs> It's the moral of the story. And that's the moral of the story. I miss Dunkin' Donuts, man. I don't know. All right. Well, uh, I I don't. We don't have another episode before St. Patrick's Day, do we? When the hell is St. Patrick's Day? It's next weekend. 
Oh my God, I'm gonna be in Anaheim for St. Patrick's Day. No, I think you're coming home because I'm gonna be in Chicago. I cannot wait to see them turn the river green. <gasps> oh, it's so much fun. I'm so oh excited. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I think I've been there <laughs> only one year for I've the never green been around St. Patrick's Day. I'm so excited. Because we're always there around the same time in March. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think I've missed it, but I've seen it, I think probably twice now because it's the houseware show, but also DDW sometimes is yeah. like early. So regardless, um, I think it's so fun and I hate St. Patrick's day because I my, no, my mom is very Irish. So she's oh. like trained me since a little girl, like loves St. Patrick's day because I'm also Irish and I, I hate mm. it because like everyone just drinks beer and pukes. And I'm just like, this doesn't sound exciting to me. And especially cause mm. I wasn't a beer drinker. Yeah. I don't know. I had so much corned beef and hash growing up. Ew. I was like, oh, oh, oh. no. So that's mm -hmm. why I don't like some hedger state. Anyway, so I went to Chicago. It was great. The river's green. It's so much fun. I think it's really cute. I'll take a picture for you this year. Yeah. But I'll be I'll be there because I'll be there. Like, that'll be the first day of housewares. Yes. Yeah. Sunday. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. You know what I spent last St. Patrick's Day doing? Actually, I, that was the most fun I've ever had. I have had no idea what you did Day. last St. Patrick's Day. I, was I don't know what I did daily. for breakfast yesterday. So Neither did I. I just didn't realize last St. Patrick's Day, I was in Golden, Colorado at Holla Daily. Oh, because that was on St. Patrick's Day. That's right. I green now I remember. With sprinkles and like a, a glitter inside of it. I was going to say, not Dunkin' Donuts. Not Dunkin' Donuts sprinkles. sprinkles in the beer. <laughs> They had a edible glitter inside of it. That's so it was so green cool. here with like edible gold glitter. It was amazing. I didn't get to have it because they ran out on like the first keg. I know I did have a little bit, but it was the only like whatever was left at the mm -hmm. very bottom. So it had all the glitter in it at the very bottom. So it was, <laughs> I was drinking mostly was edible magical. glitter at that point. <laughs> <laughs> it was so much fun. I oh, think that that was probably awesome. the best St. Patrick's Day I've ever had because I traditionally do not like the holiday, mm -hmm. do not like to do anything. But this was like fried food, gluten-free, dedicated fryer, and green gluten-free beer. Like that is like the yeah, how could best you top that? Mm -hmm. version of St. Patrick's yep. Day. Yeah. That sounds amazing. I don't know how we'll top that. I would like to see the river turn green, but I have no idea what I'm going to eat in Chicago. <laughs> Yeah, on St. Big Patrick's bowl. Day. Oh my God, big bowl! I know that it's but it not won't be Irish. Irish. <laughs> Normally, I'm home and I can make myself like I love Irish soda bread. So I make gluten free Irish soda bread. I love Colcannon, so I'll make that. I don't eat the corned beef and hash or whatever, obviously. <laughs> um, so, oh, I like to make fried fish, like you know, like oh yeah, you mm -hmm. know, I'll do that with the Colcannon, and um, and then I make the. Um, Irish soda bread. Oh, I do. I do like making chocolate beer cake though with um, oh, like green stout or, or um, Glutenberg has one now, I think now too, or no, uh, it's um, um, greens, ghost fish, ghost fish, greens has it, but ghost fish also has one. That's so good in this the watch, cake. watch stander stout. I can never remember the names of Ghost their whatever. So good. Ghost fish mm -hmm. is amazing. Um, yeah. It's a guy in a trench coat. That's their okay. stout. Yeah. That sounds right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. I didn't remember the name, but yeah. So if I was home, that's what I'd be making. You mm -hmm. can drop recipes. So for all of you guys who are home, you can make those. Ooh, maybe I should. So I come home that morning and I think the girls and I are going to try to do karaoke. But now that I know that it's. That'd be an that odd I karaoke. Oh, that's a, mm. I don't, that sounds like a weird time to do karaoke. Mm -hmm. um, huh. Well, maybe I'll just make stout bread instead. That sounds great. Oh, it's, it's gluten-free chocolate, like beer cake. Not yes, bread. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Chocolate beer cake. Yes. 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 I've made and that it's before. It's so light and fluffy and it's not like over the he your head, like chocolatey. So you can eat tons of it without feeling yeah. sick. I've, yeah, I've I made it, it before <laughs> with, uh, I made it, uh, for Super Bowl last year, Ooh, mm -hmm. yum. but I made it into cake pops that were footballs. Oh, fun. You used that and recipe I ate a lot for it. And I ate a lot of them. <laughs> I did. Good choice. Because I wanted to make it with, um, with, uh, stout. Oh, okay. It's like fun, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beer and chocolate cake balls. Yeah. That works. All right. Well, well now I'm like... 
But you always got to throw these food holidays at me. I feel like. Because I live and breathe food holidays. You know I do. I know, but I just I feel like there's my world so around them. many of them. And, and there I'm just are, like, this is a big one. I didn't make this one up. No, oh, I know. <laughs> okay. Trust me. I'm going to, you know what? You know what's going to happen? It's going to be the Sunday after Expo West. I'm going to fly home. and be like, I'm, I'm gonna not take out. It. Yep, I'm going to have Thai food. Yep. <laughs> I know. I'm here to honor my Irish heritage by getting Thai food Perfect. takeout. Not yeah. even have potatoes, maybe. That I don't know. That sounds like what I would do if I was home, but yeah. Um, oh, well. Okay, well, you're going to make the cake. You're going to send me a picture, and I'm going to eat the cake vicariously through you. Yeah. And I'm going to go to the river and take a picture next to a green river. Yes, and I'm so excited. Enjoy that vicariously through me. Oh, That'll I love a it. Beautiful thing. Okay. Oh, good. All right. Happy and St. when Patrick's next, Day, Jules. Thank you. And when next we speak with our dear listeners, we'll be recapping Expo Finds out the Wazoo. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. This week yeah. is going to be nuts. Yes, it will be. It Just always pray is. pray for us. Please do pray for us. Because mm-hmm. we'll be at Expo West finding all the latest and greatest gluten-free foods. And then I'll be headed to Housewares directly after that to find all of the latest <laughs> Things that you're going to need in your kitchen to make all of these great gluten-free foods. If you think I'm busy, just follow <laughs> Jules. Mm, yeah. It's going to be I'm going to be sleeping and Jules is going to be working for the both of us. It's going to be great. Yeah. Good luck, down, Jules. Down by the Green River will be... Mm-hmm.